is a short video tutorial to introduce you to our energy monitoring service. I'm going to use an existing project to show you how to set up energy monitoring and how to see the results. So the first thing to know is that energy monitoring is enabled on request per project. So if you want to have energy monitoring either in the web application or via the API, please get in touch with us and we'll switch it on for your project. You'll also need a silver gateway. You can see here that, that one has already been added to this project. So once you've commissioned your project and set up the areas, zones and assigned the lighting control scenarios, you'll need to set up an energy profile for each luminaire type and then select one luminaire type per zone. So here you can see that we've got a small project of three zones. We've commissioned it so it has an, a lighting control profile set up and now we need to set up the energy use. To set up the profile, click on the energy, energy use tab. If you're starting from scratch, select add a new fixture type and the input menu will appear on the right hand side in your web, in your web app. Give the fixture type a name and enter the energy consumption you recorded at various output levels. We've got another video tutorial that shows you how to do this or have a look at the application note which you can find on our website in the knowledge base. The 0%, 1% and 100% output values are mandatory but the more points you measure, especially at each end of the scale, the more accurate the results. Energy consumption is calculated based on the output of the luminaire at any time. You can find out more about how we calculate energy consumption and calculate completeness rates in our application note. You can find it on our website. You can set up as many points as you like in the energy profile. So I'm going to cancel this one and show you one that, I, that we set up earlier. We set up a fixture type named type 1 earlier. You can see the profile if you click on the pencil. We've entered a few light levels here and wattages and we can add more. So I'm going to add another reference point of say 65% and a output level of 100. 20 watts and you can see that the the curve reacts immediately so you can check that the values you're entering make sense once you're happy with it save it and that will be available to all luminaires in the project so we're going to save it so now we know that in this zone we've got a fixture type 1 going to close that and then we select the same for the same fixture type for the remaining zones. You can add multiple fixture types here and choose the appropriate ones for each zone. This fixture type will now be available for all zones in the project so you only have to do this once for every fixture type. However, you do have to assign an energy profile for each zone, otherwise we won't be able to calculate the energy usage. Remember that this feature works most accurately if there is only one fixture type in a zone. If you have more than one type of fixture in a room, say, it's best to put them in separate zones and then use zone linking to link them together. That's how you get the most accurate results. So once you've entered the energy profiles for each zone, the gateway will start gathering the energy use data and the results will be displayed when you click on energy use in the area view on the left. You can select the months that you want to see the data for. So we can see it for 2021, say December. or 22 in January 
You can select the month you want to display and the daily use for the whole area is displayed in the bar chart. If you, if you roll your cursor over the zone on the floor plan, the total energy use for the zone, the average per device and the number of devices in the zone will be revealed. If you want more granular data, you can click on the download CSV button and you'll get a file containing the energy consumption for each device in the area, calculated as 15 minute aggregates for the whole month. However, be warned, for large installations, this is quite a big file. All this allows you to see the monthly energy consumption for your project. But what if you want to get an idea of the savings from your retrofit? You can do that with the energy cost savings feature. You'll need to add some more data into the system. To start with, you'll need to input some information so that we have something with which we can compare the monitored energy consumption. So what the new or the, the post upgrade installation is actually using. To do this in the project view, click on the edit project tab. If you want to calculate savings, choose your currency here. Let us know if you can't see your currency and we'll add it to the list. Then click on the energy monitoring tab. If you want to calculate the energy cost and the value of the savings, check the first box and enter your average electricity price. Here we have 19.65 cents per kilowatt hour. Then calculate how you want to calculate the savings. We have two options. You can either choose a straightforward method based on the overall annual energy consumption for the whole building before the retrofit. We'll divide the annual value by 12 to get the average and compare it to the monitored and monthly energy use of the new installation and prepare a forecast of the savings based on that. The second method is based on comparing the energy use of the pre and post upgrade fixtures. That means before and after the retrofit. This approach is useful if you're doing a partial retrofit and if it's a one-to-one -one replacement. Let's choose the second method so that you can see how it works in practice. The final step here is to choose a start monitoring from date. You might want to do this if there's a time lag between when you install the gateway and data starts flowing and when the building is handed over. Especially early on, that time gap could skew the results. As we've been running the monitoring for a while already, we'll choose a random date, say 11th of November 2021 to start with. One thing that it's important to note here is that changing the date or editing the energy profiles won't change the energy consumption results. The values aren't calculated retrospectively. So we'll save these values for the project and move on to allocating pre and post upgrade retrofit fixtures. So we'll save those values and we'll move on to entering pre and post retrofit fixtures. Now we need to go back to the commissioning view and do a bit more work on the energy profiles. So if we navigate to the first zone and the energy use tab, we'll see now that we have an additional field. So we have the new fixtures that we entered previously, the type one fixture, and we need to make a note of what old type of fixture it replaced. I've got one here that we set up earlier called Old Fixture. If you click on the Edit button, you'll see how to enter the data. It's a little different to the new fixture type as it's a straightforward description of the number of this type of old fixture that were in the project before the retrofit. Note, this is not in the zone. This is the total number of fixtures in the entire project, their wattage, and how many hours of operation, annual operating hours, you estimate that they had in hours. 
Once you've added this type of old fixture, it's available throughout the project. So again, this is not a value per zone. This is a, these are values per, um, for the project. So we save that pre-upgrade fixture, gets overwritten. So now we've matched a new type of fixture to the old type of fixture. We can compare the, uh, the energy use. And it's the same, we do the same for each zone where we need to calculate the savings. Right, so this has been added. Once you've added this old type of fixture, it's available throughout the project. So now we know what type of fixtures were installed in the retrofit and their energy use profile because we're measuring it. And we know the old type of fixture that have been replaced. We also assume it's a one-to-one -one replacement. Of course, if the new fixtures are not replacing anything and they're completely new, we can select none. Now we can calculate the energy savings for the project and create a forecast of what they would be by the end of the year. To see this, we go back to the project view and select energy use. At the top of the page, we see the energy consumption in the current month together with the cost of that energy, based on the average price we entered in the project settings. We also see the savings compared to the previous installation, both in terms of kilowatt hours saved and money saved. We see a bar chart showing the monthly monitored energy use and how this compares to the baseline or the average monthly pre-upgrade energy use for the project. We also see a projection of how much energy will be used over the year based on the data available. As more data is gathered, this projection will become more accurate. We see a bar chart showing the monthly monitored energy use and how this compares to the baseline or the average monthly pre-upgrade energy use for the project. We also see a projection of how much energy will be used over the year based on the available data. And as more data is gathered, this projection will become more accurate. We also see a completeness rate for the month, which is an indicator of how reliable this data is, how many points of measurement out of the theoretical maximum were received by the gateway. That's about it. We hope this is useful, but if you need any help or have suggestions on how we can improve this feature, please email us at support at silver.com. You can also find our documentation on our website, www.silver.com.